to me, a sign-in contracts is great, but it's always safer to uh, double close on a on a contract. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always safer. Well, that makes sense because you actually have an ownership interest in it, right. and it's it it sounds like the the contracts that are done are two consistent contracts, right? Um, as compared to, I don't, it, and I don't know this. This is me just guessing, but is the assignment contract more of a soft type of contract that you've got, or is it pretty hard? Like, what 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 makes a double close safer than than otherwise? Well, um, like what's the exposure from, from you're the you're, side? you're physically taking ownership of the house, yeah. which you know a lot of you know a lot of people on the board of realtors right now. They're arguing that wholesalers are acting as agents with, without a license, right? But if you take ownership of the house, there's no argument there. That's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that makes sense. I'll, I'll rather take ownership, pay pay double closing costs. Yeah. You know, add it into my negotiation. And if you're good at wholesaling, the margins there anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now assignment, there can be a gray area. Yep. You know, because they're like, you know, this is kind of like a listing agreement, even though it's not. You know, yeah, I guess I, I every contract is a sign. Yeah, I, I guess I could see the argument. At the same time, it's a different, different approach, a different function, and and we're helping a different group of sellers. That you know, so the average seller that a wholesaler is helping, um, this person can't put the house on the market and expect top dollar. Yeah, you understand what I mean? Because I, these houses are in distress. They're in distress, and. Um, this may not be very popular, but that's fine. Um, we don't do anything that's popular. There you go. There you go. I, I, I wasn't the most popular kid in high school, so I guess I can't expect that now either. <laughs> no, um, um, but I think that um, that as a wholesaler, you're working in a very obscure and and like not very concrete place like you, you have to figure it out. You got to work the system. You got to mm -hmm. get it done. You, well, you, you're actually well. And this is my opinion, but it sounds like mm -hmm. you're actually finding a seller and you're, you find the seller, you find the house and you go search for, and you find the broker, right? Or you, you find the buyer, right? In, in a way. So you're actually brokering the deal. You're creating the, mean, the, the meeting of the minds, right? Mm -hmm. the, the system that is an amazing system, by the way, mm -hmm. but the system that's created by the realtors, mm -hmm. right? It's the system that creates the meeting of the minds, not the actual agents, right? Because you have your buyer's agents yeah. and the MLS is the system that creates Very true. the meeting of the minds instead of one hub who's the person. Mm -hmm. And this person knows everybody and they find the sellers and they find the buyers, right? And and basically, every, and that's the one hub that creates the transaction, right? Yeah, very, very um, true, man. And again, it, it, it may not be popular, but... I don't know many residential realtors. Commercial is a little different, right? But I don't know many residential realtors that are on average are the are the dual agent because they find the seller yeah. and they find the buyer, you know? When I was a real estate broker in Brooklyn, um, the way we made money was to list the house. That was yep. it, list the house. So as a wholesaler, you know, when you, when well, as a real estate broker rather, when you list the house, all you're doing is you're signing a, a, a listing agreement with the seller. Right. As a wholesaler, you're signing a real contract. It's a purchase and yeah. sale agreement. Yep. So that's where your equitable interest comes from. It makes sense. As a listing broker, I can list a house. I don't have any ownership in that house. Right. The seller can pull it anytime they want. Yep. But if I have equitable interest in a house through signing a contract and then putting down some form of earnest money deposit, even if it's $10. Yep. Now the seller is kind of obligated to sell me the house. Makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's good. So that's the difference between the two, really, man. And then we serve a different group of people. Most realtors are not focused on selling properties to um well, they're not focused on distressed real estate. Right. As investors, we're serving a different market. We're yep. focused on distress. Yep. These people can't sell their house for top dollar on the MLS. Yep. You know? Um, most people on the MLS don't have the money to buy cash, buy these houses for cash. You, most people in the MLS have to go get a mortgage. These houses that we're buying as wholesalers are not mortgageable because right. they're too far in distress. So yeah. it's just a different, a different approach to different market. 
that's exactly what it is. So I don't know. I don't understand what the argument is when it comes to real estate agents saying that wholesalers are acting as investors without a license. It's just not the case. You know what I mean? And if all those things are generally the case, then it's and there's a, a laundry list more. No, I can, that I can makes go down the whole list, man. But it sounds like, in terms of of the market itself. That wholesalers aren't even dipping into the market that, not even. that most realtors would want anyway. Not, not, not nowhere near. So it. now we're just talking about a semantics argument just Basically. for the sake of it. And people are cracking down on wholesalers. Or one or two nothing. realtors got got hurt. Yeah. And so now they're mad about it, so they're going to throw it. I don't understand it, it man. It, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah. Hey, what's up? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Listen, I really appreciate you watching this episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.